Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at a portable touchscreen monitor from Innocent. This one here having a 15.6 inch display size offering IPS technology at Full HD or 1080p resolution. And what makes it a little bit more interesting I think is the design. It has a fairly modern look and also this integrated kind of kickstand on the back which you can pop open or fold flat that's built into the monitor directly. Offer universal compatibility with any standard type C or HDMI device. Pretty compact, weighing less than two pounds, and sells for a little bit north of $200, which is competitive these days for a portable monitor. This model covers up to 100% of the sRGB spectrum, so it should be very vivid and also decent in terms of color accuracy if you're trying to also use it for some photo editing. Brightness of this panel is advertised up to 420 candelas per meter squared, which is actually quite bright, and you should still be able to see it if there's a bit of light hitting on it. This offers a 60 hertz refresh rate, by the way, which is pretty standard. So we have a quick user guide inside along with a microfiber cleaning cloth to wipe away any dust as well as fingerprints. And then accessories include a USB to USB type C cable. So you can use this for connecting to another device like your phone. There's also a wall adapter that is powered by type C to provide juice to the monitor. So this does not have a built in battery on this particular model, but you can also plug it into a power bank when you're on the road or in some cases connecting it to your computer directly. It can also take the juice from your computer computer, if you're using type C that is. So here is the monitor itself and first impressions is it's definitely very well constructed. We have tempered glass on the front, pretty minimal bezels on the left, right, and top sides, just a little bit larger chin on the bottom portion. The edges of the monitor are constructed out of aluminum alloy so it feels very sturdy and premium, cold to the touch, including this bottom hinge area that also houses some of the I.O., including a standard 35 millimeter headphone jack if you don't want to use the built-in speakers. You'll also find a mini HD HDMI along with two USB Type-C ports. Although notably the first Type-C port is just for power and only the second one is for video. And then on the other side we have a power key along with controls for toggling some of the brightness settings. From the top here which is just the monitor without the kickstand component you can see just how thin this is. It really does feel quite premium and here it is just for contrast next to a standard smartphone. And then finally here on the back we have just the rear of the monitor which again is still made out of the same sheet of metal and we have some soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around. So when you're ready to use it, all you need to do is lift up this kickstand and it can kind of pop itself open at a variety of angles. It's quite a stiff kickstand. And here's a closer look at that process in motion. So we can tilt it backwards, it still is holding the weight here just fine. And um, everything is pretty well supported, even though this kickstand portion is not quite as tall as the entire kind of width of the display. Although if you are using the touchscreen and you apply a lot of force, uh, there might be a little bit of wobble towards the top section of the display, but overall it's not too distracting. And uh, overall it's a pretty well constructed hinge that feels stiff enough to use and doesn't feel too loose or anything like that. It can also be pulled backwards by the way, so if I want to set it down like this, I can do that as well. So now in this mode, it might be a little easier if you're trying to give a presentation and look at notes, as well as maybe for something like typing. More elegant and well put together than some of the past budget portable monitors we've seen that has that kind of folding foldio case which is just a little bit more flimsy and tends to flop around a bit more. Although it is worth noting that again, this model doesn't come included with a case in the box. So if you want to protect the screen when you're traveling, I would recommend putting it into a laptop sleeve or something that measures 15.6 inches. All right, so turning things on, here's what the display looks like. And immediately we can see that the colors are quite vibrant and it is a true IPS panel, which means that again, view angles are over 175 degrees. So even if we're looking at it from a pretty extreme tilt, the colors still look fairly natural. And again, the full touch functionality is working as long as you're using USB Type-C connected to either a Windows computer, a smartphone, or anything like that, and it's recognized pretty much out of the box, working without too many complaints allowing us to draw and doodle, and overall responsiveness is quite good, supporting up to five fingers in terms of multi-touch, really working without any problems, feels quite smooth and responsive to interact directly with the display. But again, like other glossy displays that have this glass covering, it does mean it's a little bit more prone to glare. So if you do have light that's hitting directly on it, it may also cast a few more reflections, and of course it collects fingerprints a little bit more easily. But overall, as long as you are cleaning it once in a while, it still looks quite good. If we take 
a look at some of the built-in settings just by toggling on the keys with the edge there. We can toggle between things like brightness level. So right now this is what 100% looks like. I can also dim it down to something like zero just to give you guys an idea of the minimum setting. But now the controls on the side here, by the way, are not touch sensitive. So you have to rely on the keys on the edge to navigate the settings of the monitor itself. Other things that we can control include being able to see what source we're using. So type C right now is at 1080p. We can change things like the contrast levels. We can even change the hue and saturation. So just to demonstrate, if we tap on warm, for example, this is what it looks like. Or if I go into cool, that's the kind of difference there. You can see a bit noticeable. Here's also a design mode, which is also kind of a kind of a middle ground between the warm and the cool, and then a user-defined mode, which you can also adjust the red, green, and blues yourself. A movie mode, uh, which will slightly make the contrast a bit more popping. Reading mode, which is kind of the middle brightness, and then night mode, which is the dimmest, so you don't have to go through the brightness levels yourself every time. A eye protection mode, which will basically turn down the blue light. So here we have another look at the web browsing experience, so you can definitely use this for things like reading back articles. You can see how just nice the contrast looks here on the dark edges of this page, even though it's not an OLED display. I do have to say it's very high quality for an IPS LCD. It looks like it's almost completely black here, so quite good. And overall, again, everything is definitely legible, even though it's at 1080p, even tiny text details. If you're reading things along, doing a bit of work, document editing, it all looks great. And the speakers right now are also coming out directly from the display. So if we crank up the volume a little bit, Overall takeaway being that the display quality, again, is very impressive for the price that you're paying. It just looks quite sharp in terms of the colors, super punchy and vibrant, even on this default mode. In terms of the speakers, again, it is a stereo pair, so you do get a little bit of separation between the left and the right sides. But again, because it is such a thin panel, it's not going to have the room for the largest drivers in the world. So you won't expect the best quality that you've probably ever heard, but it is definitely functional if you want to just play back a quick clip. It does get usually louder than the speakers found on most phones. Uh, with that being said, they are still a little bit on the thin side if you're looking for bass, uh, which means if you want to have the most cinematic experience, of course, connecting it to an external speaker using the headphone jack uh, would definitely be a further improvement. Finally, ending on a few more examples of using this as just a productivity tool. So if you're trying to edit documents on it, again, looking great. You can even do a little bit of multitasking, although text might be a bit small if you're trying to split it into two sides, but that is perfectly possible. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of this Innocent 15.6 inch portable monitor. Again, it really is super compact, easy to just take with you. Looks more expensive here than the price I would say implies. And the touchscreen functionality is also quite useful if you want to interact with the display without having to rely on a mouse or a keyboard. So something like this can really help you if you're trying to do a bit more of multitasking, whether it's on a regular laptop and adding a second screen or even connecting it to a phone like we have in this demo right now. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. You can check out more details in the links down below if interested. For now, that's been our video.